Love so much about that. How y'all doing? Now, when I, when I said take your time, now, Coach, I didn't mean take your time to bring me on the stage now. Y'all can have a seat. So, I, you know, I got texted about two weeks ago. They said, What's, what song you want to come out to? And I gave them some song. And when I got into the energy of this room, I said, no, no, no. I got to change it up. So he said, I used to rock a throwback, balling on a Kona. And now I rock a tailor suit looking like a, ooh. Oh. I'm, I'm going to come to this side, because that side kind of shy over there. <laughs> yeah. This is a little black boy from San Bernardino, California. So the funny thing about this is like, somebody said LA, no, no, San Bernardino. <laughs> so the funny thing about this, y'all, is like, some of y'all may know me from my network marketing experience. Some of you guys may know me from my credit repair business. Some of y'all may know me from the way I did this one video where I told him to uh, take your time. And I said, hold up, what I, these is not regular socks. <laughs> Either way it goes, you guys, most of you all know me from my work. You know Drake, smiling, taking pictures, millionaire, millionaire, 100,000 students, all this stuff, right? But what you don't know, what you don't know is who I was before you started to follow me and like me for my work. So for my, I, I, you know, I can sit up here and talk about all the other stuff that really doesn't matter too much for you, right? But I wanna share with you where I was at 10, 13, 15, what was happening inside of my life at that time. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, cool. Cause I get all these accolades and I'm just like, man, I know it's me. And I didn't pay coach to talk so nicely about me. But I want to share this with you all because I, my, my, my sole intention is to come on this stage was not for you guys to get more familiar with me. Most of you guys are pretty familiar with me. But I said, you know what, as I was talking, I think I was talking to Tammy, talking to my best friend Mickey, I said, the only reason I want to go up here so that I can be used in a way that you guys can take something from me through my story and apply it in your life. Is that okay? All right, say talk, 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 bro. And so when I was, as long as I could remember, I've always had high ambitions. I've always wanted to be that person that did more. I didn't really understand the importance of money. So I won't say it was a money thing. It was like I always felt like I was different, right? I know I looked the same. I know I grew up in the worst city. When I say the worst city, I'm talking about worse in crime. San Bernardino, California, look it up if you don't believe me. When I say worse in city, I'm talking about all-time low in, em in employment. If you don't believe me, look it up. When I say uh, 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 poverty, I'm talking about the schooling system, okay? So as I started to figure myself out, 10, 12, 13, I was selling candy, I was always doing certain things, I ended up, and I've never shared this story, so when you guys hear me say vibes, you guys hear me talk about being on the right frequency, some of you guys know that I'm very big on my energy, as you should be. Not everybody deserves to be in your proximity. That's another trainer though. Um, I realized that I was becoming something that I couldn't really explain, right? So many people are eagles, and I've done this training, and I've spoke about this before, but as I start to think back at the 13-year-old, 15-year-old Drake, and I start to think back of what I was doing different and how I was moving different, how many of you all have friends, and when they go down a certain direction, it just, maybe it's going to the club too long, maybe they, they like to entertain gossip too long, maybe they just may not be as ambitious enough for you, just, just about to raise your hands. Okay, a lot of you all, right? That is how you first identify that you're an eagle. So when I start to look to my left, I look to my right, I've seen people with beaks, I've seen people with wings, I've seen people with feet, right? They were chickens, 
look to the side, look to this way. I said, okay, well, I must be a chicken. Let me just do chicken shit, right? <laughs> Seriously. So my environment, my environment started to shape me. So even though I had these high ambitions where I would go to my friend, I'd say, Tammy, I think I could do this. Nah, let's just stay down here and do the chicken stuff. Can you guys relate? Okay. And so what ended up happening was when I made up in my mind that just because I looked like them, and this is not me saying that I was better, it was something that was like a gravitational pull. Have you ever just felt like just so uncomfortable? It's like, I don't, it's not about you, baby, it's about me. Does that make sense? And I, and I would feel myself saying, I don't really like talking, like, I don't really like walking like that. I ain't really into that. Yeah, I could go and do this, but I ain't really. So I found myself not really good enough to be here just yet, but I wasn't, I wasn't staying here. See, sometimes you have to realize that you don't always have to know where you're going. You just have to recognize where you won't stay. Does that make sense? So, so I'm, I'm here. I'm in this weird space. I think this is where my introvertness comes from. I practice this so well. And so I'm in this weird space of really not knowing exactly what direction I wanted to go. And sometimes, how many of you guys understand that when you're not working on your environment, your environment is working on you? I'm going to say that again. When you're not working on your environment, your environment will start to work on you. Another way that coach says it is, feeling good is a? Magic. Right. So, when I started to really pick up on those principles at a young age, um, I didn't have the right support externally. And then internally, right, you guys hear the highlights of the accolades of my parents and stuff like that. But a lot of you guys don't know that I came from a very, very, very toxic place with one of my parents. And one day I'll tell you guys which one. So I had this one parent, extremely strict, law enforcement, 30 years. You gonna be in law enforcement too, right? That type of thing. Could you guys imagine me as a cop? <laughs> Wait a minute. Before you, like, yo, you gotta chill, right? No, no this to like cops or nothing. I know I got one in here. So. I'm like a cop kid, don't, don't worry. Um, right? So even inside of my household, there was a lot of toxic things that were happening. Here's nothing for the parents out there. Be careful of the seeds that you plant in your children's mind. Because I will go to one household, and although it wasn't toxic in mental abuse, it was toxic because it didn't allow me to dream. The other household was toxic because every time that person got upset, I felt that. Does that make sense? So then I said, okay, well, well, home is not fun. Home is not fun. So what can I do to escape what I'm feeling? So then I said, okay, I'm going to start a club. I was the first person at San Gregorio High School to start BSU. And I still support that organization 13 years later, financially, just cut a check for $20,000. Didn't even post about it. It's coming up. Right? Um, could have picked up a full ride scholarship uh, to run track at any school. And to, instead, I took an academic. Um, so I do got a little bit of a brain up here, a little bit. Um, but I started to do things to not really address the issues that were happening, but to numb what I was going through. So I was like, oh, that's Drake. He's really good at track. That's Drake. That's BSU president. That's Drake. He's on track to graduate with a 3.68, right? Mm -hmm. But what was happening all around me was that I found myself equating and measuring my success by what I accomplished. Now, in the beginning, it's dope. Because if you upset me, I just got to a bag. If you stabbed me in my back, I just got to a bag. If you betrayed me, don't worry about it, I just got to a Oh, this is the, this is the money room, right? So 
at 26, now I'm grown. My dad living his life, my mom living her life, I'm grown. At 26, I felt alone, so I said, I'm going to just get to a... I don't know nothing else, so I'm going to just get to a bag, and I did that. I mean, I kept doing it. At the height of my career, one of the highest paid African-American males in all of network marketing. At 26 years old, living in a 10,000 square foot mansion, at 26 years old, driving that Bentley. Remember that Bentley that Coach was talking about? And I, and I got it, she was eating her Chipotle and she, was te- she might have been texting and driving with her knee. I said, Lord, they brought me here to kill me. <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. And I, and I said to myself, I want this Bentley. And I said to her, I want this Bentley. And you know what she said, without even a joke, without, she, you, could, you can get it. I believe you can get it. And I believe because she believed. I believe because she believed. And so, as I stated earlier, I said, If you didn't know, if you're not working on your environment, your environment is working on you. Space repetition is the mother of all learning. Things that you don't even pick up intentionally, you're learning. DJ, help me out with this one. Y'all stand up. Stand up. This is a story all about how my life got twisted, turned upside down. And I like to take a moment just sit right there. I tell you how I came the prince of a town called Bel Air. Cut. Why do y'all know that song? Why do y'all on this side know this song? (laughs) Who went to school to study it? Nobody? You wrote it down? So when you weren't working on the song, the song was working on you. So that's exactly how life works, right? So boom, I realized in this transition, I said, you know what? I I feel weak. Did you? (laughs) This is the biggest, it's so funny that this thing is called the awakening and the way that I'm starting to formulate this entire presentation or conversation is around that. See, when you are awakened, you are more powerful than ever before. And when you are asleep, you are more vulnerable. When you are awakened, you are more powerful. And when you are asleep, funny how that became a slang word. Now, when you are asleep, you are most vulnerable. How do we use that in context? Man, you sleep. You don't know what I'm talking about. You lost. You ignorant to the fact of. Right? And so I said, you know what? Now fast forward, going into my adulthood, I said, I need to start working on my environment. My dad's doing this. My mom's doing this. My cousins is game banging. (sighs) Internet. I start typing in shit. <laughs> Number one income earner in the world. <laughs> start typing in stuff like people looking for students to train. I swear to God, this is real. This is serious. Top money earners in network marketing. That was the one. That was the one. Looked up on YouTube. I seen this lady that had a bus and a fur. Now, let me bring you back real quick. Because my first company was a company where it was like, you see how I keep doing? Okay, this is, this is my first company. Billion dollar company. Uh, in a room of this many people, three black people. And, <laughs> and it's like this, and it's like this, and this is all I knew for network marketing. It's like, okay. So now it was this lady. She had this chinchilla on. <laughs> And she's in the Bentley, and she's going to the strip club, and this bus, it was the bus for me. When the bus passed me, I said, I made $90,000 last month. Ask me how. I said, shit. (laughs) (laughs) So I start reaching out, start reaching out, and I'm so glad that my girl was there to hold my hand. Yeah. And I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm going to tell y'all something. In that process, before I even flew there, I was a fill-in. How many of you guys had a fill-in before you pushed? See, y'all put the credit card in. 
And then y'all thought about it. Y'all probably went to go use the bathroom to make sure you was making the right decision. <laughs> right? It's like, how much is it? Right? Right? But there was a feeling that said, you know what? This is it. This is it. So when she, yeah. So she told me don't tell that part of the story. I'm going to just tell it anyway. Uh, so I actually ended up joining twice in this other company, right? Because I said, you know what? If I'm going to be aligned, I need to be aligned with the right person. I'm going to be honest with you. And so when she reached out the first time, I said, well, I want to talk to you about this. This is what's happening. And she said, if you're serious about it, come out here, fly to Atlanta, Georgia. Which I don't know is I flew to Atlanta, like many of you are. I flew to Atlanta, and when I say to y'all, I, that was really like my last little bit of money, so much so that my girlfriend at the time had to give me a portion of her financial aid check. Don't worry, I paid her back, I promise. But this is a true story. The first $1,700 was mine. The second $1,700 was the girl that I was dating at the time. I said, one day I'm gonna be one of the greatest to ever do it. Just please, I need $1,700. It, it worked out for her and me. I, got, I, got, I paid for, I'm going to say this publicly, and we don't date or nothing, but I paid for the down payment on her house. This is a true story. True story. I said, I told you. And so in regaining my power, write that down. In regaining my power, I knew that I needed to be in an, an, another environment. I knew that I was no longer supposed to be hanging with the chickens. I needed to find the eagles. And I knew that the right eagle, hello, the right eagle would invite me in. This kid from California was able to get in contact with her. And then she trusted me enough to pick me up from the airport and then take me in. And 10 years later, I'm here. So think about, when you just talk about just principles and you talk about the universe and the way that it works, I, everybody is grateful for storms, but no one more than me. Oh, I'm telling you, my whole life has changed. I don't even think y'all understand. Do you understand, being from where I'm from, do you understand that if it was not for stormy, I'd either be a cop, depressed, or I'd be a cop. Like that, that would, like, no, really. Because there was nobody else that looked like me that I felt like I could do this with. So when you hear a girl hold my hand, think about this event. This is her whole, at that time, when I joined, I don't know if she could have put this many people in the room. This right here is like a YouTube, you reaching out to her, her reaching back out to you, except it's hundreds of people here. You guys can be up here in three years, four years, five years, just like I am. So when you hear a girl, ho- yeah, clap it up for that. So when, I, so, so when I hear a girl hold my hand, it just hits a little bit different for me. It just really hits a little bit different for me because I am the result of my girl holding my hand. I am, I am the result of what is possible once you decide that you may not know where you're going. You may not know what's going to happen when you give your last. You may not know what's going to happen if you get rid of the toxic people that's in your situation. You may not know what's going to happen, but you know what you've gotten so far. You know where you can't stay, yes or yes. So boom, I'm at the top of my career. i got a couple more minutes, and I'm going to use all of them. I'm, what I'm going to do? Shout out to Natasha. She gives me life. I said, yes. You know, you ever see the church that says, uh, uh, you know, starting my day, but first coffee? Yeah, starting my day, but first Natasha. <laughs> yeah. You give me so much confidence. I'd be like, hold up. Wait a minute. But first, check out the shoes. Right? I don't even know where I was going with that. Um. What was I saying? I was just making sure y'all was paying attention. So at the height of my career, 26 years old, making over $100,000 a month, Stormy's first millionaire student, sitting in a 10,000 square foot mansion, hundreds of thousands of dollars in my bank account, and I was sitting there depressed. Oh my God, depressed. Be careful, because remember, all I wanted to do was get you a bag. 
Because I'm running, I'm a hairstyle. Yeah, some of y'all been running for a little bit too long. You got to face it. So at 26 years old, at the height of my career, getting a little popularity, I start dating somebody. And, and I ended up being a little stressed out one day. And I went to her house. And I was probably stressed. Some, probably something stormy said, I don't know. But I was <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> She's probably like, this is the last time he's going to be on stage. Um, <laughs> But this is a serious part, so I got to make a joke of it because it's about to get a little bit deep. So I go to her house, and I, I'm sitting on the bed, and I'm stressed out about probably something. I don't know, somebody at my downline, just you know, regular stuff. You guys network marketers. And she goes, have you ever tried? And she didn't even finish. I, just, I remember her going to, to the, dress, the dresser and grabbing a bottle, orange bottle. I remember it. She handed me two pills, two five millimeter or milligrams of Percocet, two five milligrams. She said, this will make you feel better. And now listen, yes, I came from an inner city. Yes, all, but I never did nothing. I didn't even drink until I was 21, for real. So she's like, this will help. I'm like, I took care of it. She's right, it do help. Right? And then I kept taking it and kept taking it, and kept taking it. So you know, I don't know about these rappers and what they was taking, but I'm talking about 50 milligrams. Yeah, I know. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. This was my life for two years. And what happened was, it started to affect my productivity. It started to affect my relationships. I started to, not intentionally, but mess up relationships that I wish I would have kept. But that is my truth. So in that, I said, wow. <laughs> you ever been at your lowest point? Like, God, please, just one time. Just one more time. <laughs> if you save me from this one, I promise. So I'm at the, I'm, I'm at the lowest point. To y'all, I'm at the highest point. Stormy knew. My best friend knew. I don't think no one else in here knew. At my lowest point. And I'm hearing people talk, Drake did this, Drake, I'm like, look, you can blame me a little bit, but these drugs, like, y'all, tch. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna regain my power. If I could overcome a toxic parent, if I could overcome being stripped out of, listen. I really wanna, and, 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 and I don't encourage, I mean, if this is not your truth, then don't, it, it is perfectly fine, but I'm just talking to you guys about my truth. Is that okay? Yeah. So my personal relationship with one of my parents, you know, <laughs> so much to the point to where I was taken out of the household. Is that enough for y'all? Okay, cool. So now we can move past that. And so I'm thinking, that I, I regained my power through that. I found Stormy, or maybe she found me, we found each other. And then my next big thing is like, I found this girlfriend that got me on drugs. I had to shake her, shake it. And then I disappeared for two years. I know some of y'all were affected by that, I'm so sorry. But I had to get me together. So I was gone for two years, no social media, year and a half, no social media, no none of that. No network marketing, don't worry about it, don't text me, don't call me, I am Wu Sai and I'm about to go to South Africa. And I did that and I came back. And most, a lot of you guys are the result of me coming back. Thank you, thank you. And, I, <laughs> and when I came back this time, in, 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 in that place that I was in, and I'm gonna stay here for about three minutes, in that place that I was in, when I start talking about regaining my power, when I start talking about affirmations, I am the head and not the tail, I am above and not beneath, when I start speaking life into myself every single day, you know why I appreciate Natasha so much? The videos are funny, but that ain't why I did it twice. You know why I appreciate her so much? Because it gives me the confidence that I lost for like three years. Imagine that, the Drake, all y'all want to take pictures with, you want to smile with. I'll go back to, how, how many of y'all have seen me just like dip? Just out of, where the hell is Drake? Yeah, that was that and still deal with it sometimes now. But the funny thing about this is that 
in my lowest point, I knew that I needed to regain my power. So I started to do things and get myself into environments that made me feel good. So I watched that because it made me feel good. I connected closer to the stormy because it made me get, be, feel good. I got reconnected and realigned with some of my brothers and sisters in TLC because it made me feel good. I started to rebuild again because it made me feel good. And guess what? Because I felt good, I made more in one year. In, tw in 2020, I made more in 2020 than I made in my entire career after my breakdown. I want y'all to catch that. And so I don't know what it is that you guys are running from. For me, it was a parent. For me, it was poverty. For me, it was drugs at one point in time. But see, I'm not the only one that had an addiction. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take my jacket off for this one. I'm not the only one that's running from something. See, some of you guys are in relationships you <laughs> should have been cut off. See, some of you guys are at jobs that you should have been cut off. Some of you guys are dealing with stuff at home that instead of saying enough is enough, I will no longer be treated like this. I will no longer feel defeated in every single interaction. Instead of doing that, you run to the gym. Instead of doing that, you run to maybe another person. Instead of doing that, you run to food. You run. That, that is the same thing that I was dealing with. So it wasn't until I attacked it head on that I started to attract the people, the places, the money, the stages that I wanted into my life. So I don't know what it is for all you wonderful ladies and men, but there's something. There's something that's happening. Because it's, it's, it's either you do or you don't. So there's that thing that's happening that is keeping you from where you want to be. Yes? Yeah. It's something that's happening that's messing up your energy. Yes? yes? Because when you feel good, you do good. When I felt bad, I was at my lowest point. It's very, very simple. When Natasha felt bad, she was at her lowest point. When Stormy felt bad, she was at her. But when you start to regain your power, when you start to walk with confidence, now be careful, when you walk with too much confidence, and people may try to bring you back down to their reality. Now you notice, I didn't say bring you back down to reality. I said bring you back down to their reality because as you start to continue to grow, you start to look a little different. You start to smell a little different. You start to talk a little different. And when that happens, if your environment doesn't change at a rapid enough pace, you'll find yourself on a very, very uphill battle. You will. And so it's very, very important that you guys all understand, number one, environment is key. Number two, if you're hanging around too many chickens, all you're going to do is chicken shit. I thought that went up on a plane. I figured you guys would laugh like a lot on that one. <laughs> Halfway, a little bit. I'm going to work on that one later, right? <laughs> but the ego, you guys are in here because I believe, you believe that you're an ego. I believe you believe that you've seen the same thing in Stormy that I've seen 10 years ago. And I promise you, 10 years from now, this room, 50,000 people. Oh, for sure. Matter of fact, that may be a little bit too big for y'all to believe, so I'm gonna say this. It's, it's still gonna be 50,000. But just this room, what's this, 200 people? Yeah. Five years, this room would be all millionaires. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. This is the breakout session. This is the people that decided to break generational curses section. This is the section of people that decided to change their environment. This is the section of the people that said, I may not be able to afford it. I don't know where I'm going, but I know I can't stay here.
in my closing, I had so much that I want to pour into y'all, so much that I just want to authentically give to y'all. But this is what I want y'all to take away. So much of my beginning story I didn't even share because I want to maintain a semi-healthy relationship with the people that I love most. (laughs) Use your imagination. My life has went up, and it has went down, and it has went up, and down, and now we up. And it's stuck. Oh, it's stuck. I want you to get up, get up, get up, and I want you to celebrate. I want you to get up. I don't want to see nobody sitting. Everything is energy. Hello. As I close this thing out, I want y'all to start, I want you to start thinking. Before we take action, I want you just to envision yourself. Whatever call to action you got today, whether a, 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 a physical call to action, or maybe you were just called higher internally. Maybe it was something that was said this weekend that made you feel like, wow. So you may have heard it before, but you may have felt it this time. And I want, you to ima- I want you to imagine yourself as if you actually did exactly what you said you would do, exactly what you wrote down, everything that you said that bothered you, everything that you said was holding you back, everything that you said made you feel weak instead of in power. I want you to imagine that in 12 months, you actually became that person that you said that you will become. Not that you just wrote it down, but you started to act like that person. You started to do things like that person. And now your business is 10 x And now you live where you wanna live. You drive where you wanna drive. You are a motivational speaker. You are a top business owner. You are a top realtor. You do have that radio station or that TV station that you want. You are the number one attorney in America. This is the type of stuff that you want to be around. This is the type of stuff that you want to believe in. Because guess what? If you don't believe it, if you don't believe it, if the people around you don't believe it, I love so much what she said her camera lady could have knocked her down. If you don't believe it and the people around you don't believe it and the people around you, you're not taking inventory of the people around you, I promise you, no matter how big of a dreamer you are, if you're hanging with chickens and you're really an eagle, it don't matter because the chickens is going to keep you with the chickens. I've never seen a chicken flying. And if I could give you anything, forget the money, forget all of this stuff that people talk about about me, what really, the reason what qualifies me to be here talking to you guys today is I'm one resilient motherfucker. Yeah. 